you know, we're part of a world. And if we want the world to be more positive, then to be caring about it, I think is how we're gonna get there. So I'm Judy Featherstone, and I'm Chief Health Officer here at HealthPoint. My first memories of HealthPoint are in January of 1990, HealthPoint had 40 employees. Um, they were working out of four clinics. Auburn was the largest by far with um, four doctors. Kent, Renton, and Eastside also existed. The Auburn Clinic was a small gray, one-story building next to the train tracks in Auburn. And so when we would listen to hearts in that building um, and the trains were going by, um, you really mastered listening for heart sounds um, with the train. Well, the vibe of Health Point in 1996 was uh, an organization that was you know, dipping their toe in the waters that they had never trotted before. So it was a very big deal to add natural medicine services to this conventional medical setting. For many of our patients, you know, culturally what they grew up with was natural medicine. And so uh, to be able to receive that was really important to them. After I became medical director, you know, I partnered with Cindy Breed, Joanne Deccan, um, to just make sure that it kept growing. That's really the theme of how I do leadership is to partner with others who are moving something forward and often running into barriers. And my job is to help get rid of those barriers. When she sees something that's not right, she wants to sort of use her voice and the power that she has to fix it and to make things better. Behavioral health at HealthPoint was non-existent for many years. So when I started, it was very simple. We had no help. Many, many people fall through the cracks. Judy always told me when they queried at the time all the providers, uh, they identified behavioral health issues as being one of the major things that made it hard for them to do their job. So we were trying to find a way to bring in behavioral health, but in a way that was really complementary to the work of a family doctor. Judy was leading the, the charge with that to try to um, build an integrated um, behavioral health service at HealthPoint. I could see that from meeting with Judy and the other people at HealthPoint that there was so much passion in them for the work that they do. You know, they were really the, 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 the first primary care organization to to integrate using this model in, in Washington State. HealthPoint was an early adopter of electronic health records, um, particularly in the community health center worlds. We had patients for a number of years by then had these patients with charts that were, you know, two inches thick and probably two to four volumes of those. The only computer in the Kent Clinic was in the natural medicine provider office. I was chuckling this morning about the staff that we had whose job it was to deliver the paper charts to the right people at the right time, uh, but the charts were stored down below, and so there was basically an elevator for charts. In the early 2000s, paper records just were not adequate for being able to keep tra track of the whole person and to reach out to people at the right times. And so that transition really from registries to having an electronic health record that would start letting us look at populations of people even better um, was vital. You know, Tom Trumpeter always was having creative ideas with other creative people when they would get together at national meetings and looking at what are the issues we need to solve. And we had a huge problem hiring physicians for a long time. So the National Association of Community Health Centers um, asked ATSU, the oldest osteopathic medical school, if they would be willing to create a med school just to train providers that wanted to do underserved care in community health centers. ATSU approached HealthPoint to be one of those initial 11 sites. And Judy was, you know, on the forefront in saying yes to that request. Now, I never was very good at saying no to Tom's brilliant ideas. And so we walked into a lot of great things because a group of people came up with the good ideas. And then we said, okay, we'll play. 
I appreciated Judy immensely in my career. I'm usually going at 90 miles an hour um, and at times probably driving people a little bit crazy with, you know, what hair brain scheme is he coming up with next? And she would engage me in a conversation that allowed me to expand my own thinking and at times slow down a little bit um, and really consider not just the systems level stuff, which is where I've lived most of my career, but the human factor. Yeah, I have two children. And so the oldest one was six weeks old when I interviewed. And she is now a family physician and has three children, the youngest of who is six months. And through the years that I was learning um, how to be a leader at Health Point was also at the time that I was learning how to be a parent. When I started with Health Point, I was only envisioning being a doctor, you know, and that's what I was, and, and am. Um, and I never had any picture at all of going into a leadership position. I remember when we had lost one medical director and someone said, well, Judy, do you want to do it? And she was like, no, no, thank you. Um, and then we went through another medical director and that didn't work out so well. <laughs> and so they, we said, Judy, do you want to try it? Well, temporarily. When I left, uh, they asked her to be, you know, acting for a while. And then the next time I talked to her, she said, yeah, well, I'm the medical director now. And I said, whoa, really? I, I didn't think you'd want to do that. And she goes, yeah, I didn't either. But you know what? I, I think I'm okay at it. <laughs> Uh, and clearly she was. I think the thing I'm most proud of in my leadership role of Health Point is developing the shared um, clinical and operations leaders of our site. When uh, she first became medical director, she supervised all of the medical providers in the organization, doing all of their annual reviews, and then realizing that wasn't really sustainable and also wasn't a good way of growing the leadership in our organization. And so the idea of having people that were leaders and clinicians at the sites um, that would partner effectively with the operation side um, was so important because that was where I'd been frustrated before, uh, was feeling like we didn't have a voice. And it worked out really well because she was a great mentor to physician leaders so and always has been um, because she makes that personal connection and figures out what it is that people need to be the best they can be in that role. Even though Health Point has changed and grown and Judy's positions have morphed, she has been my boss this entire time and I've been fortunate enough to have had her as a mentor and a support and a supervisor for 21 years. You are my first doctor when I came here in America. And now um, my son is here. You are the one who delivered 21 years ago. And I'm proud to say almost graduating from UW for engineering. The other thing I'd, I have really appreciated about Judy is she leads with both her head and her heart. Yeah, I mean, HealthPoint has had to transition from a smaller community-based organization, healthcare provider, to a large primary care system. And that requires um, leadership capacity, leadership capability, and she's always had a vision for that and been able to um, guide us um, successfully in that development of people and especially future clinician leaders. So Judy really helped me grow as a leader. She's the one that kind of is that model for how do we want to make other people feel? How do we want to make people feel valued? And uh, it's what inspired me. So I will say this. Um, because of the work that I did, I had exposure to lots of people who sat in clinical leadership roles around the country. None of them hold a candle to Judy Featherstone.
Judy's leadership has helped us build a ro robust care model. I mean, this whole person comprehensive primary care model that includes medical care, dental care, um, pharmacy services, behavioral health, all of the care support programs that we've recently rolled out, that's all part of a broader model that she's really held a vision for over the years and helped us to build. We've always not just said we're gonna try something new, but are committed to it and actually achieve it. So we say we're gonna to try to do some of this integration. We become the model for integration. We're gonna try behavioral health. We create a model, we start training people how to do it, and it's a big piece of who we are. And there's been a lot of challenges new clinics, um, new programs. Somebody comes and asks us if we want to try it, and we do it, and we do it well. So that, I think, is an amazing part of the Health Point spirit. And I think Judy was a big part of that vision. I think relationships are definitely important to Judy, and she has tended many, many over the years, and uh, that's part of her success. She takes relationships seriously. Said my, my mom has been seeing her for 30 years. Uh, she always gave us guidance, you know. So it definitely shaped us to the, to the person that we are today. I feel very safe with her. Thank you for having me here. My children have seen me since they were born. And it also helped me a lot to educate my children. You touch my mom's heart, and you touch all of our hearts with, with everything that you did for us for me, to my siblings, and we'll definitely miss you. No matter what, Judy's always there to make sure that you are fully understanding about your care. If she didn't know it, damn certain she was gonna find it. And she's watched me cry hysterically. She's watched me um, get very, very mad. Um, and she has helped me through, through thick and thin. You know, she respected the people that, that she worked with so much. She valued them so much and she could see in them, uh, I think a lot of times things that maybe they didn't even see in themselves. And she certainly did that for me and I will for, forever be, you know, grateful to her for that. Um, yeah, makes me a little <clears throat> emotional. I guess one word to describe her from me would be authentic. She, she does not put on airs. She is not arrogant. And, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine the things that Judy had to juggle, but it didn't matter. If she were with you, you would feel like you were, you know, the only person in the world, and she would be attentive to you, and she would be interested in your life and asking you about it. And there aren't a lot of people that are like that, and uh, Judy is one of them. What made Judy such an inspiration was how she would make, how she presented herself, how she cared for people, how she um, showed up, and um, you always knew that uh, you, were, you were what mattered. Judy is like the perfect kind of metaphor for Health Point in one person, right? Because she's, she's brilliant, she's, she's innovative, she's, and yet, and she's very community-minded, and yet she's humble. I'm sad that she's gonna go, but I'm happy as well because she's lived life through every one of her patients. She's lived multiple lives, and now it's time to live the one God gave her. But uh, you go, girl. Go and have the time of her life because that's what she needs, you know? I'll miss Judy's wisdom. I'll miss her years of experience and perspective. I'll miss being able to talk to her about remember when we didn't have an electronic health record and remember when um, admin was on the third floor. Um, I'll miss having someone who has known me for more than 20 years, has watched me grow and develop and deeply cares for me. I think I appreciate the most how much people care. Um, about that we're doing the right work, that we are respecting each other, um, 
and that they care about me and I care about them. <laughs>